Hello there. <laughs> Welcome back to Mother Nature and Me. Today is Safari Day. Do you guys like to learn about animals? Mm-hmm. We're going to learn about all of these amazing animals in the wild. I have this book called In the Wild. It's a very cool story and it's a rhyming book. So it has a little poem about each animal that you find in the wild. Well, about lots of them, not each of them. So we're going to read that story and our craft today is binoculars. <laughs> All right, so grab some toilet paper rolls, grab some tape and decorative, uh, decorative tape and paper if you have any, uh, get a scissor and string, and you'll also, uh, it's going to be helpful if you have a bottle cap right in there I put a bottle cap because it separates it so that this fits right onto your eyeballs nicely <laughs> okay so go ahead and gather those supplies today's safari day we are going to explore are you guys explorers I think that all of us have a little explorer inside of us right we love to explore. I love to explore the garden. I have my Explorer Toolkit with me today. Of course, I have my binoculars. We're going to make those together. I have my magnifying glass in case I need to magnify anything. <laughs> I have my water jug in case I get thirsty, of course. And I have my bug gathering container, of course. When we gather bugs to examine them, try to discover new species, we're gonna put, always put some soil in there so they feel comfortable and make sure that they're still in their natural habitat. Make sure that there's air holes in your bug gathering container, right? So that they're getting some oxygen coming in. And of course, after we're done examining them and learning all about them and counting their little legs, we're gonna release them, right? You always release them back into the wild where they came from. Do you see what I have in here? I don't know if you can see. I found two cuddling centipedes or millipedes. Not quite sure what the difference is, but they're cuddling. The two of them are wrapped together. I thought that was so cute. They're all curled up, sleeping, and they are alive. <laughs> they're moving, but they're curled up together. So I put them in here to show you guys. <laughs> all right, little explorers, are you ready to hear the story? Okay, let's get started. In the wild. This is written by David Elliott and illustrated by Holly Mead. The lion. Rawr. Can I hear your lion growl? Rawr. The lion stands alone on the grassy plain. He has his pride. He shakes his mane. In his eye, the sunset glistens. When he roars, the wide, the wide world listens. The lion. Oh, can you get, can you figure out which one this is? Big, yet moves with grace. Powerful, yet delicate as lace. As to color, plain and ordinary gray. But once we start to look, we cannot look away. When peaceful, silent, when angry, loud, who would have guessed the elephant is so much like a cloud? Look at those beautiful illustrations. Can you see? The giraffe, stilt walker, tree topper, long necked showstopper. A 
as lovely as the antelope, as lovely and as fast. But antelope is always first and zebra is always last. They say that's just the ordered way, unchangeable, and yet I wish we had for zebra's sake a different alphabet. <laughs> Zebra. A horn stuck on a boot-like face. So wrong and clearly out of place. A frightful sight. Pre preposterous. It might must be a rhinoceros. <laughs> this is a tongue twister. Rhino. So many amazing animals in the world, right? I have affection for the sloth, though he's small and rather hairy. Brown the color of a moth. She only moves when necessary. <laughs> sloth. The jaguar's back is flowering with delicate ro rosettes and as if she's grown a garden there. So beautiful and yet there's a danger in the jaguar's gait, a soundless step that warns. Beware of jungle raised bouquets because these are hidden thorns. The panda, you're a bamboo bandit. You're a piebald dream. You're a bear in silk pajamas. You are cookies and cream. You're the wizard of the mountains. You're the prestigion. You're nature's best example of a bear's imagination. The panda. Pandas are cute, aren't they? Look at them. They love their bamboo. We can never touch them, so we love them from afar. They are wild and distant the tiger and the star. We can never know them. They are not what we are. Fire, fire, burning bright, the tiger and the star. Tiger. Can you see all the little stars above? Look at that bright star. I love these illustrations, they're so beautiful. A dear orangutan, three cheers to you, man of the forest. You, re you arrived here long before us. You paved the way, you saw it through. How nice to have someone like you sitting in our family tree. Sincerely, from your cousin, me. <laughs> orangutan. going kangaroo going 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 no one can jump the way you do boing 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 in burning sun in blinding snow there stands the mighty buffalo his temper short, his suffering long, 
once was 60 million strong in burning sun in blinding snow behold the mighty buffalo the wolf she opens her eyes she leaves her lair she lifts her head and sniffs the air and then ow! the moon looks down a, a cloud drifts by as she stands and waits there's no reply and then ow! can i hear your howls <laughs> the wolf the polar bear swims from flow to flow oh look she's disappearing into the snow the polar bear white swimming bear into the snow the end did you like that so many amazing animals in the world wow that was a cute book i like the poems all right, you guys ready to make binoculars? Hmm. I'm trying to see if you have all your supplies. Yes, I see toilet paper rolls. I see scissors and string. Hmm. I see a bottle cap. Yes, I think you have everything. <laughs> all right, guys, so let's get started. Now. Grab your toilet paper rolls. <clears throat> now, if you notice, they are, if you put them together and you try to put it on your eyes, it's a little bit, for me at least, it's a little bit uncomfortable. It doesn't really fit on the eyes the right way. So you kind of want them to be separated like this, which is why I put the bottle cap in the middle of mine. You see the bottle cap right there? So it separates them. And then it fits on the eyes perfectly. Okay, so let's grab, um, grab your bottle cap. If you don't have a bottle cap, you can probably use something else. Maybe you can fold up a little piece of paper or something, but the idea is to create like a separation like that so that it fits perfectly on the eyes. So we're gonna start with that. Get your tape. And let's make a loop of, with your tape. Stick it onto the back of the bottle cap. Okay. And then stick it right in the middle of one of your um, toilet paper rolls, like that. Okay. Then take another piece of tape and go over it. So you really secure it down. Let me see. So I have tape there. Okay. And then you're going to take one more piece of tape and make a loop. Make a loop and stick it on the outside there so that it's sticky on the outside and attach the other toilet paper roll. So now, you push them together, they stick. You should have something like this. But it's still not going to be very secure. You see it's starting to fall already. So what we need to do is we're going to we're going to wrap tape around like how I did with these to really hold it together. But before we do that, oh, I'm sorry, we were supposed to decorate these first. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take this off. I'm sorry if you guys are following along with me. 
We can still use it. We're just going to put it aside for a minute because we were supposed to decorate these first. So you can use decorative tape or paper. This is a really good upcycling craft too because we're using something that would have been thrown away, right? Toilet paper rolls. And I have these old sheets that I kept from a calendar. They have, it's a whole bunch of them and they all have different dates on them from like 2005. These are old from an old calendar. But look at how cute, they all have these different colors and patterns on them. So I thought it would be cute to save these and use them for craft projects. It's always better to save something and reuse it, right? Instead of throwing it away. So if you're using decorative tape or even markers or paint, you go ahead and start decorating your toilet paper rolls. If you're using paper like me, you go ahead and measure, see how much you need to cut off. takes is a piece of paper and a piece of tape and ta-da it's decorated <laughs> pretty easy do my other one now this also would be cute with wrapping paper if you guys have old leftover wrapping paper from the holidays or something you can use that to decorate your binoculars. Wrap it around and tape it. And there we go. Here's my other one. Can you see? So, my, I like it to be mi mix matched. I didn't want them to be matching, so I have a green and a yellow. Okay, ready to move on? Okay, so now we grab the, um, the bottle cap. Sorry about that. Mine is still sticky. I'm going to see if I can use what I already did. And we're going to attach it to the inside, right in the middle. Like that. I'm gonna add a little more tape. Have you guys ever used real binoculars before? It's pretty cool. You can see things that are far, far away, and you see them up close as if they're right in front of you. So when real safari people that go on journeys and they explore the wild animals, and it can be a dangerous job and they cannot get very up close to the lions and the tigers, the way that they see them from far away and still keep a distance and stay safe is with binoculars. Okay, so now I'm attached. There we go. There you go. Very good. Now, uh, like I said before, you want to use some tape to actually really bind them together because the, the bottle cap is going to be a little bit wobbly. It's not super strong. So I'm going to grab some, got some pink tape. And you're gonna just wrap it around the whole thing and use it as a way to cover up that bottle cap as well so you don't really see it. Okay, like that.
looking good. I have a pink and an orange tape. So it's serving a purpose. It's holding it together nice and strong, but it's also pretty, making it decorative. All right. I'm happy with the way that looks. You guys ready for the last step? Sun is in such a weird place today. It's kind of. Can you see? Okay, the last step is attaching the string to the back. So grab some string, some twine or ribbon. Let's measure it across the back of our head. Make sure it fits and give yourself a little bit of extra room too just so that we have extra space to tie it. All right, got your string. Now, uh, we need to poke two holes in our binoculars, right on the side, okay? So on one side, on the outside, and then one on the other side. So using your scissor or a, maybe a pen would work, but probably a scissor. Make sure you have an adult helping you if you need help poking a hole with the scissors. You're just going to poke a little hole right through the side. You see? And you do the same on the other side. And then you're gonna string your your string right through it. Like that. And you're gonna tie a little knot. And this will allow us to drape it around our neck if we need to wear it like a necklace so that our binoculars are close by in case we need to see anything real quick. <laughs> Okay, tie the other side. It's a little tricky getting it strung through there sometimes. I'm using the scissor to actually help me poke it through. There we go. Make a little knot. All right. Look what we got. And then you can cut off any excess string that's hanging there. How cool is that? So now we have our very own binoculars. Now, of course, like I said, these are not real binoculars. Real ones will help you zoom in from far away. But this is pretty cool for maybe some backyard exploring, finding caterpillars and ladybugs. <laughs> awesome. Make sure you send me some pictures. I wanna see your binoculars. This is very fun. And it's a great way to use up those toilet paper rolls. <laughs> all right guys well this has been fun and I just wanted to also make a quick announcement for those of you who are missing mother nature and me in person which we all are I'm missing you guys we are finally bringing it back starting the first Thursday in September so it will be uh, 10 a.m. just like before but we are requiring pre-registration on our website so that we can kind of control the class size um, because there will be a limit uh, for the class size. So go ahead and visit our website, um, delraybeachchildrensgarden.org 
And if you look at the programs, you'll see Mother Nature and Me starting, I believe it's September 6th, whatever the first Thursday is of September. And you can pre-register, uh, it's $7 per child, and it will be more or less the same as before, story time and a craft, um, just with some extra safety precautions. So looking forward to seeing you all. And thank you for watching. And even after our virtual classes stop happening, I'm sure that I will still do some from time to time. So I'll still see you all virtually. Thank you, Susan. Lovely activity. Hi, Joy. Grandma. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. All right. So I hope you guys have a beautiful day. That was a lot of fun. And I'll see you again next week on Thursday. Bye, everyone.